Hey, Daredevil's amazing, guys. Also, I got to take pictures with the Daredevil at Texas Comic Con, but also with that. Normally, my helmets are way too small. This one is way too big, guys, but I'm going to show you how you can avoid that, but also show you what to get the files, prints, and paint, and all of that, so maybe one day you can take pictures with the Daredevil himself, guys. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So the main thing is the files, guys, and I'll tell you how I messed up the sizing up in a second but the files are from DO3D or D3D whatever your flavor is but I got the V1 version which is the free version on DO3D you just go to the top there's gonna say free and you're gonna get a bunch of free stuff that you can easily download this is one full piece the back the dome and then you can do some eyes too with it if you want more customization you can do the V2 files and the back part actually opens up so you can put velcro you can put elastic you can put magnets there for a much tighter fit and for a much tighter squeeze guys if you so choose to i did the v1 you can also do the v1 or the v2 right here without further ado let's get to the scaling right now so you got the files now we need to print this thing i use elegant slicer normally every same use um orca slicer orca slicer this orca slicer that i don't i don't see any benefit from it if you could tell me how in the comments below, that would be amazing because when I do it, the same exact files, density, everything, infill, supports, angles, and all that, I get higher times and I also get more filament that is wasted from, uh, from let's say, a 600 print, it will go to an 800 print or 900 print for whatever reason. And it's the exact same, exact same support placement and everything. I have no idea why. If you know why, please leave it down in the comments below. But... For this helmet, guys, there's two ways that you're going to print it. The way I did it and the way I think you should do it. Now, if you see this layer line, this was my fault because I didn't check the spool to see how much filament was in there. I was just printing, printing, printing. And then when I went to um, Third Level Helmet, there was not enough. So that was my fault. But also, I've seen some other YouTubers and they print their helmets like this or on its back like this on the head. And yes, it might shorten the time is down. Yes, it might give less filament. But as you see, I get more craters like that. I get more dents in my in my props like that. So the way I'm starting to print all my helmets now is just doing it regularly like that. And then just taking a support blocker, put it right here. And there's yes, there might be a little stringy, but it is nothing that is crazy. Just easily sandable on the top, and it comes out much better in my opinion, guys. And as y'all see, you can see the times on the screen and also how I printed mine and how I think you should print yours. Without further ado, now let's get to the sand. So after we got the files, now we need to sand it to perfection. And as y'all know, I use the same three sandpapers, 60, 120, and 220 sandpaper. I use my electric hand sander and I just go over the entire print with the 60, 120, 220, just like that. And then on the ears and in these eyes right here, it might be a little harder to get in. So what I do is I take the sandpaper off. I have the circular ones. Then I fold it once. I fold it again so it's a little pizza. And then I just go into the eye so I'm not hurting my fingers. And I just sand, sand, sand all the way into I see normal layer lines. Into it is smooth, guys. The way to get smooth prints is to put in that work. Put in the effort. That is how you're going to get a smooth. You can put Bondo, you can put filler primer, all that, but the sanding needs to be there. You can sand prime, sand prime all you want, but get the sanding first, then the prime, then the Bondo, and then the paint. After I did the 120, then I used this duplicolor filler primer, which is my personal favorite, the best primer that there is. I first use it uh, one coat. Wait 30 minutes, a second coat, wait another 30 minutes, and then I wet sand everything. I wet sand the whole entire piece with 320 grit sandpaper. Then I bondo. I bondo everything, all the little nooks and crannies, maybe a little of the dividends that are in there, some scratches, some marks, some layer lines that the filler primer or the sandpaper did not get in there. Way I see best is don't try to smooth the bondo out to the print. Leave it a little gunky, leave it a little bit lift it above the print just a little bit so when you wet sand you sand the gunk down to where it is smooth so you're not sanding the bondos to where it shows the layer line you're sanding it to where it gets to the print if that makes any sense when i bondo 
everything. I let it sit for another 30 minutes. Then I get 400 sand, 400 grit sandpaper. I send it down again. Then I wait, do another layer of filler primer, the duplicate filler primer, conceal everything together, get everything together, and then I go back over with that wet sand 400. For the paints, just like I said, just like the sanding and the priming, again, 30 minutes in between. I used 30 minutes for a gloss black, I masked it off. I used the red, I wait 30 minutes, and then I did a light dust coat of the metallic, wait a couple minutes for that, I think 20 minutes for that, just because it's light, and then I did the gloss. Then after I did the gloss, I took off all the tape, and then as y'all see, right here. Now, I tr didn't want the black to have that glossy reflectiveness, just because I wanted a flat black so you can see the gloss from the red, but the flat black designs from the flat black, and to get those nicer details as well. Now, there's a second way you can do the black, is if you don't want to paint it and have the trouble of trying to knife everything out from the paper, uh, from the tape and mask it, is afterwards you can get a small little brush from the Dollar Tree, get the flat black paint, pour it, spray it in the cap, and then slowly do the design, slowly um, do it. You might need to do a couple coats, maybe two, three, four. I know I have to do that for some of my others, just like the Spider-Mans and whatnot. If I want those small intricate pieces, I just have to do it just a little bit, just a little bit, slowly and surely so I don't mess anything up, guys. So, without further ado, guys, this was the Daredevil helmet. And the reason that I wanted to print it is, one, because it looks cool. Two, because I wanted to. Three, because when I went to Texas Comic Con, and yes, you will hear about the full cosplay of the Iron Man suit next week. So, stay tuned for that. I wanted to take a picture with uh, Charlie Cox, Daredevil, which I did, which is very cool to meet him and all that, guys. But without further ado, guys, this is the Daredevil helmet right here, guys. Without further ado, leave a like, leave a subscribe, share it to your friends, family members, whoever wants to make this, or maybe you can make it for them. Without further ado, let's get it.